character. Don't plan on being before you too long. Amen. Give me about 30 minutes and we're going to, we should be finished in about 30 minutes. I um, just want to drop this in your spirits. Amen. Uh, and a reminder that uh, Tuesday night we will be having a consecration at 6.30. Um, between 6.30 and 7.30, we will, we will be in prayer. And at 7.30, we will begin our Tuesday night Bible study. Uh, we've been getting some very good um, discussions. So if you haven't been here, you need to make it your business to come and be with us on Tuesday night so you can be a part of that prayer and a part of that Bible study. Um, amen. I just want to um, thank God for everyone who's able to come out and participate in this weekend's um, car washes and breakfast and everything was successful and uh, we ask that you continue. Also, a reminder parents, if your child was not here Saturday um, and they did not get a um, speech or did not get a part for the Christmas um, Youth Day, uh, please see Sister Robin Stokes so that your child can be a part of the Christmas program which will be the Sunday before Christmas. They have already begun to give out the parts and practice. So if your child was not here and you want to be a part of that service, please uh, give the Sister Robert Stokes so that your child can get a part so that they can be a part of that service. Amen. Once again, we're going to go ahead and get into the lesson. Coming from the book of Colossians, the third chapter, I'm going to start at the 22nd verse. And my purpose is to deal with Christian character or to deal with the Christian behavior, how we should conduct ourselves as Christians. This is a part of our fundamental foundational faith and what we believe in the way that we should live our lives, the way that we should uh, conduct ourselves. Before you try to go on to, to um, doing the greater things, as they say, the deeper things, you have to first establish Christian character, godly character. Amen. Um, one of the, or well, the definition of character is uh, pretty much, uh, it is the way that I carry myself, my traits, and uh, the way I carry myself um, as an individual, that's my character. Uh, my mannerism, my traits, the way, what I do, the way I act, the way I talk, uh, the way I respond to life, uh, not just when I'm in front of people, but when I'm away from people, that's my character. Character is revealed not so much when you are in front of somebody, but your real character is revealed when you're by yourself, when nobody's watching. That's when the real you come out. Uh, we have a tendency to put on um, a, a mask, put on a performance when we're around somebody, especially Christians. We have a tendency to begin to perform when we come to church. We put on our mask, we put on our um, costume and go into Christian mode, but that's not the real you. That's not the real you. That's just your Sunday you. Uh, but I want to talk about the real you, the part of you that you don't bring to church on Sunday. Your character, uh, the way you really talk, the way you really act, the way you really think. And so as believers, we want to develop Christian or godly character. We want to uh, develop godly uh, mannerism and traits and the way of living and conducting ourselves so that when we go out from the building, we will yet remain Christ-like in our behavior and in our speech. Amen? Amen? Amen. So let's go ahead to the book of Colossians, the third chapter. I'm going to start at the 22nd verse, and uh, I'll pull two scriptures from here, and then we'll move on. Uh, 22nd verse says, Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as man pleases, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. 23rd verse. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto man. 24. Knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. So we see here that he's giving instructions to the believers. This is not for the unbeliever. He's giving instructions. 
to the believer, to the child of God. And he says, child of God, obey those who are in charge of you or your master, those who you are responsible for. Uh, we don't have masters, so to speak, but we have those who have authority over us. We have boss men, we have children, have parents, so on and so forth. We have people that have authority over us. And so he says, as a believer, as a child of God, we have a responsibility to obey, to bring ourselves under submission to those who have authority over us. Now, this is not something that the world is is going to agree with, not something that the world is going to take a whole lot of pressure in, but as a child of God, we have instructions to submit ourselves to those who have authority over us, to not try to buck against or try to rebel against or try to um, um, overthrow those who God has positioned over us. So when you're on your job, there is someone who has authority over you and you are supposed to deal with that person according to that. You're supposed to deal with that person according to uh, uh, the authority that they have over you, whether it's a manager, a uh, 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 boss man or whoever, you are supposed to respond to them according to that, not try to murmur not try to uh, uh, to pull that person down by speaking uh, uh, um, behind their back or or talking about them or, or, or trying to uh, round other people up against them. That is not godly character. That is not godly trait. That is not the way as we. That's not the way we as believers carry ourselves. And so he's teaching us that as believers in Christ, that we need to be responsible in the lives that we live. We need to be a light. The Bible says that we are the salt of the world. And if salt has lost its savor, then it is good for nothing but to be thrown on the ground and trampled on. So if you are a believer, but yet no one can see the evidence of your faith, then your faith has no, it has no value. If you go into church on Sunday and, and nobody around, nobody at home, nobody on the job can see the manifestation of what you believe, then you really don't have any faith. Your testimony really does not have any power. You have to have a testimony that goes beyond coming to church on Sunday. You have to have a testimony where the people who are not coming to church can see that you are not just a church goer, but that you are a believer. That you are a Christian. Matter of fact, the word Christian means to be Christ-like or to take on the discipline of Christ. So when you are naming the name of Christ or you say, I am a Christian, then all of a sudden everybody begins to look at you. Amen. When you get up and say, I'm going to church, everybody now begins to look at you because they are respecting you to handle yourself and to carry yourself a certain way because you said, I'm a Christian. Or because they know every Sunday you get up and go to church, so they're looking at you and they are expecting you to carry yourself and to handle yourself in a Christ-like manner. Matter of fact, sometimes they will test you Amen. just to see if you're going to respond in a Christ-like manner. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, then the first thing they hit you with is, I thought you was a Christian. Mm -hmm. I thought you were saved. I thought you go to church on Sunday. And so we have to learn how to show this behavior and this mannerism and these traits, not just when we come here. We don't have no problem doing it here, but when we leave here, we need to show godly traits. You need to go to work on time. Amen. That's a godly trait. You need to go to work on time. If you take a 15 minute break, 15 minutes means 15 minutes. <laughs> not a half an hour. Oh. What you say? We're talking about godly traits. We're talking about living a Christian lifestyle so that those who are not Christians can see your God through your lifestyle and through your lifestyle glorify the God that you serve. They want to see a difference between this worker and the worker that's not saved. But if all y'all cussing, if all y'all leaving work early, if everybody's stealing, then there is no difference from the believer and the non-believer. We both look the same. And so the Bible says that there should be a difference between what the believer does and says and what the unbeliever does and says. We have to be an example, a light in the eyes of those who are not saved so that they might see our God, fall in love with our God, and give their life to him and be saved along with us. So the Bible says, he says, obey those who have charge of those who are your masters 
He said, those who are in authority over you, he says, submit to them. And he says, not as man pleases. Not as man pleases. Not as somebody who's trying to please man. When the Bible says, uh, not with our service, that's another way of saying man pleases. <coughs> Somebody, a man pleaser is somebody who works to try to impress somebody else. But as soon as they're gone, you don't do that anymore. Hmm. You're doing it in their presence. Eye service. In other words, as long as they're looking at you, as long as their eyes are on you, you are uh, working a certain way, you're acting a certain way, you're, you're living a certain way. But when nobody is looking, when nobody is watching, then the lifestyle and the mannerism that you begin to act it's not the same. That's what you call I service. As long as other believers are around me, then I live a certain way. Amen. As long as I'm around other believers, I act a certain way. And see, I know this is real because I've dealt with this myself. There are certain people that you get around that when you get around them, they change the way you act. Yeah. They change the way you talk. They change the way you think. I tell my children, I'm not a fool. I know that when you go to school, you don't act the way you act when you're around me. <laughs> so there ain't no use you trying to make me believe that when you're at school, you ain't showing up. <laughs> because I know that when you are not around us, you don't act the same way you act when you're around us. Amen. But sometimes, you know, we as parents, uh, 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 I'm definitely not one of these parents, but some parents believe that child don't do no wrong. That's right. Oh, not my baby. Oh, yes, your baby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> your lying baby. Amen. Fighting baby. Yeah. Amen. Always trying to jump on somebody, baby. That's your hard-headed child. Mm -hmm. You have to understand that when they're not in your presence, they do not act the same way. Because they are immature and have not developed character. But when you are mature and develop character, then the same way I am in front of you is the same way I am when I'm not in front of you. Because when I was a child, I acted like a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. And so I am me, regardless of whether you are around or not. Amen. I'm me. Because I have character. It is the development of character in the midst of my trial and tribulation. The purpose of trial and tribulation is to develop your character. To bring you to a place where you are the same all the time. Mm -hmm. Not just the same, with not one way when things are good, but something else when it's bad. No, you are the same all the time. That's the purpose of trials. That's the purpose of testing. To drive out of you, to push out. You will learn how to praise him when you got a lot of money and still yet praise him when you have no money. Amen. Amen. Paul say, I have learned how to be rich and I've learned how to be poor because I've gone through both and I have developed the character to bless the Lord when I got a lot and to still bless him when I got nothing. Thank you. That didn't come overnight. He say, I have learned. I have developed character. So that when I got a lot, I'm still good. When I got a little bit, I'm still good. I don't let it go to my head when I got a lot. And when I don't have a lot, I don't let it mess me up. Amen. Character. Character. To be mature as a believer. Developed to the point where I can't function in any environment. I know how to handle myself. I know how to conduct myself. I know how to uh, uh, watch my actions and watch the things that I say and do so that I don't become a stumbling block. Last thing you ever want to do is become a stumbling block to somebody else's faith. To become the reason why other people say, I don't want to know God. To become the reason why other people walk away from the church and say, I never go back to that church. I never uh, uh, join that. I never, I never, I never. Why? Because of something you did or said that was out of Christian character. You don't want to become somebody's stumbling block. So you have to learn how to live in character. I'm going to live a life of discipline so that I will not hurt you, but be able to help you. I tell you all this all the time that I'm mindful of my position. I'm 
way because I would never want to become a stumbling block to anybody. Thank you. I would rather not preach than preach and be a stumbling block to somebody. And so yeah, I have to be mindful of the things I say, the things I uh, do, the places I go because I don't want my life to hinder somebody else's life from serving God. Amen. And you see a whole lot of that nowadays in society where pre uh, Christians have hurt the faith of other people. They have injured the hearts of other people and caused them to stumble because they were shown to have no character. They had a good representation when they were in front of the people, but when they thought there was nobody looking, when they thought there was nobody watching, nobody listening, that's when the real person came out and we came to find that you were not what you said you were. My Lord. That's why you hurt me because you thought you made me think you were somebody you was not. If you would have let me know who you were from the beginning, if you would have told me when I met you that you was a hypocrite, if you would have told me when I met you that I couldn't trust you, if you would have told me that I, when I met you that you weren't no good, then I would have been ready. But you lied to me. You deceived me and made me believe something that was not real. And that's why I'm hurt. Amen. Don't allow your lifestyle to hurt somebody else. You have to have character. You got to develop character. It's developed in stretch. Character is developed in pressure. Why? Because you don't really know what's in you until you get in pressure. You don't really know what's in you until you get in a rough situation. You don't really know what's in you until you get some, some, some weights on your shoulder. You don't really know what, what, what you believe until you get some pain in your heart. Thank That's you, when you find out what you're made of. That's when you find out what you really believe. That's when you find out whether or not you're sold out, whether you got a made up mind when things get rough. That's when you find out who you really are. You don't find that kind of stuff out when things are good. You don't find that kind of stuff out when you got a lot of money. You don't find that kind of stuff out when you're strong in your body and everything is going good. You find that kind of stuff out when hell breaks loose in your life, when your money dry up, when your relationship get all uh, rocky and hard and, and you can't find peace in your house. That's when you find out what you're mad. When you stand at the altar and say, to death do your part, that ain't about nothing. Mm. That ain't nothing. It's when you go home. The Bible says, and whatsoever thou do, first of all, he says, do it with the singleness of heart, fearing God. Singleness of heart means to have a made up mind. It means to be focused. It means to have a heart where you have decided that I'm going to do this. I'm going to serve God. Yeah. You can't have yeah. a halfway heart and serve God. You can't have a heart halfway made up mind and serve God. The Bible says a devil-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You can't be devil-minded and serve God because then when pressure comes, you're going to go back to the other side. You have to have a made up mind that I'm going to walk with God. The reason that we have so many people that walk away from the church is because they come to church with half a mind. Yeah. They got half a mind that want to serve God, but the half a mind is still in love with the world. Yeah. The, half a mind, the other half still loves the club. The half the other half the other half likes to get drunk every now and again and sip on a little wine or uh, whatever uh, uh, every now and then. And, 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 and that, that mind is what caught, gets me in trouble. Yes. Amen. Right. Thank you, Lord. That's the problem. I got one part of me that loves God and want to serve him and go all the way. And then I got another part that still loves the things of this world. That's my issue. That's my problem. That's my battleground. That's my struggle. As that's real in my life, I'll never really be able to serve him. Right. I'll never really be able to wholeheartedly follow him because the enemy will always send my light to me. He will always send my temptation. Matter of fact, let's go to the book of James. We're going to let um, follow this a little bit. Um. Let's go to the book of James. Amen. Whole Colossians, because I plan on coming back. Still gonna try to keep my 30 minutes. My God, okay, it's okay. Let's go to um James. <laughs> I 
James, the first chapter of